Today on our 2015 Dodge Grand Caravan, we're going to be installing the Tow Ready Custom Fit Vehicle Wiring, part number 118534. All right, this is what the harness is going to look like when we receive it. As you can see, we've got the brown and yellow T side. This goes to the driver's side of the vehicle. We've got our green T side. This goes behind our passenger side taillight and the passenger side of the vehicle. We're going to have the white ground wire for our module. This gets attached to any of the body panels behind the taillight housing there. Here's our module itself. We've got our black 12 volt wire. We're eventually going to run that to a 12 volt power source. And here's what we're really after. It's our four pole trailer connector. This is going to run right out of the center of the vehicle here. We've kind of got it positioned kind of where everything's going to be. This would be favoring over to the passenger side, but you get the general idea. We'll have all the electrical connectors we're going to need. We're going to have an inline fuse holder, our screw, and our fuse. And then we've got some extra double-sided foam tape here in case we need a little extra security. Now that we've got a general idea of where everything's going to go, let's remove both of our tail light housings. So you can see there's a screw located here and also one down here at the bottom. 10 millimeter socket works great at getting them out. Then we'll pull rearward on our assembly here. You kind of want to work this front edge with your fingers as well. You'll have a couple little little pops in there. You feel that, heard that first one there. Just kind of keep wiggling it a little bit. There we go. It's going to pop out. You've got these two pressure fittings there. One there and one there that pop in on the front side. They kind of hold it in. You see that little red tab in there. We'll slide back on that to unlock it. There. And then we'll just squeeze it together and pull out our connector. Now set your tail lights aside to where they won't get damaged or scratched, of course. And now we'll just do the same thing here on the passenger side. Get this one removed and set aside safely. You see here, if your fingers don't work, you can also use like a trim removal tool or a firm plastic spatula for that matter, just to kind of get in behind those and kind of separate those out. There you go. Now here on our driver's side, we'll take our yellow and brown T connector. We're just going to slide the factory fitting right into there until we hear it click. As you can see, it's designed to work great with all of our factory connections, so we really need no mi wire modifications. We're now going to take our module, we'll take the green and the four pole wire and press that down just by pulling out some slack. We'll just allow those to go right down between the bumper here and the body of the vehicle. All right, we'll just let that sit there for now. Now here on the passenger side, we're going to be pulling that green wire up through. So we're going to use a pull cable. You could use a piece of wire you might have, a coat hanger, anything. You just want to kind of stick it down there and you'll see it come out the bottom side. And then we'll just tuck it in up here to hold it in place until we get our green wire connected to that. Now let's free up some of the slack from our green wire here. Get our four pole a little more organized. And then we're just going to start routing our green wire over towards the passenger side. Now there seems to be a nice area right in here behind these bumper supports that would really help hold this up out of the way. We want to avoid any moving objects, any hot objects like our exhaust here. We want to make sure that gets really well up and over the top of that. Then once we have it over here, let's just connect it onto our pull wire and we'll pull it up towards the top of the car. We'll just free up the end of our pull there and bring our wires on up through. Got what we want. 
We're now going to make our power wire connection with our 12 volt cable. We've taken the length of 12 volt wire that was provided and we've worked it up from the bottom. You can see we've got the end of it here. Just need to strip that off. We're going to add a butt connector to it. Make sure that connection's nice and solid. And we're also going to connect it onto the end of the module here. Now we're just going to get this connection made for now. We'll route it up to the front of the car in a few minutes, but just want to make sure we've got all of our wires connected here so we can get all of our slack adjusted and everything, knowing that we've got enough length of wire. We're not shorting ourselves anywhere. And then just wrap it up with a little tape. Next co connection is going to be our white ground. Now for this we're going to need a drill with a 3 30 seconds bit. And we're going to find a suitable mounting location inside our, our rear taillight housing area. Now you don't want this to be too high to interfere with the taillight when it goes in. Just pick a good spot over here. Now before drilling anything, of course, you'll want to verify that you don't have any wires or anything like that hanging out behind there. We'll now take our provided self-tapping screw, place it through our wire, and then screw it into the hole that we've just drilled out. See, that's nice and secure. That's going to ground our module out to our body. Now let's clear off the location we're going to mount our module to. Just a little alcohol help there. Peel off the protection cover there. And we want to mount the epoxy side down. We don't any, want any water or anything getting in there. So we'll mount that kind of downward. Get it really far down there as low as we can get it. That's going to prevent any interference when we slide our tail light in. And then just really give it some good pressure 15 or 20 seconds to really help that adhere well. Now that we've got that taken care of, let's go ahead and get our assembly. Just take the end of that T connector. It's going to get slid right back into the very first connection we separated. Listen for that click and then push that tab down. Get it right back in its factory locked position. We'll just line up our two pressure fittings there. Get a good firm push in. You'll see that seam come together very nicely. We'll just reinstall our two bolts here in the rear, holding the assembly in place. Just apply just a little bit of torque to it. Doesn't need a whole lot. You see that one's in place nicely. Now let's take care of the passenger side. All right, now we've just got two wires to finish up. Let's do our four pole now. All right, so we're just gonna bring this over. Just kind of zip tie it in place. We'll go right on the hitch here. Seems to be the best spot for it. Then you'll see we'll be able to bring that right over top and do whatever we want with it. Kind of loop it around here. We can use the dust cap to kind of hold it in place there for us if we'd like to there. Or if you don't want it to be visible, you could just tidy up your excess here and zip tie it right up there on top of the rail of the hitch. Now we'll trim off the excess on the zip ties we've used here. Now let's run our power wire to the front. I'm going to bring this over. I'm going to lay it right down on top of our hitch, right there where we put that four pole in. 
I'm gonna secure it there first, just to give me a really good anchor point. And then we can head up towards the front. As we go along on this, we're gonna be trimming the excess off on all of our zip ties. Now for running our power wire towards the front, we're gonna use a piece of airline tubing again. This is just gonna give us a little bit of a stiffer material to try to push through some of the smaller areas. Again, just like before, coat hangers and stuff like that will work well. A harder or a more stiff gauge of wire maybe would work. Whatever you've got laying around the house there, it's gonna make it a little bit easier if you can get something to kind of guide this through for you. So the first area we're gonna feed this through is gonna be right between the hitch that's in place and the fuel tank. As you can see, it goes nicely right up through there. And then while we pull this through, we wanna just guide it. Sometimes it'll get pinched if we don't. Once we've got it ran up beside our fuel tank here, we wanna avoid any of our moving points like our springs, the bar that goes across here. There's a nice little tab that sticks out right there that's got a hole in it. I'm gonna zip tie it to that. A good pull there, as you can see, that's gonna hold it up here out of the way nicely. Once we get past this point, we're gonna see where our brake lines kind of start to run up towards the front there. I'm gonna try to follow along with those. That brings us right over top of the shock mount there. And then let's also go right over top of the fuel filler nozzle there. And again here, you can see our brake lines come over in front of our bracket there. We'll go right up above those to bring it down in right there. They kind of make an S curve here. Let's just stay right along with them. All right, now we're gonna follow right up through there. You can see the brake lines kind of go up that way, head up towards the master cylinder. So we'll try to feed our fish right up along through there with them. And you'll get as much slack up there as you can. All right, perfect. Followed right up along with the brake lines. Came out right here above the battery. We're gonna bring it right around here to our po positive battery terminal. Just gonna keep pulling our slack up from the bottom there. I'm gonna go under the negative terminal you can see there. And then just kinda help get our slack out from down there. Bring it below the positive terminal there. Now before we make any connections into the electrical system of our vehicle, we're gonna pull the negative cable off. Just uses a 10 millimeter wrench, pull that off. Just let it sit over here to where it won't make contact. Just like that, it'll be fine. And then we can remove, or at least loosen the small 10 millimeter nut located there. Now when it comes time to make our connection, we wanna add our fuse protector, our inline fuse in place. We're gonna cut this in about a 60-40, so we'll leave one side just a little shorter than the other side. There, cut it off. Now let's trim both ends of it up. Now on our short end, we're gonna put our ring terminal. On the longer end, put our butt connector. While we are got our tools out here, let's go ahead and also strip back the end of the black power wire we ran up from the rear. That's gonna go on the other side of our butt connector here. Each of these you're gonna pull on to make sure they don't slide out. Got a good secure connection. And now let's go over them with a little tape just to help protect it. Let's do the same on our butt connector here. 
We'll now finish taking that nut off that we loosened earlier. Place the ring terminal down on, and then tighten it right back down on there. Now into our fuse holder, we'll place the 15 amp fuse that was provided. Push it in there. Put the cover on it, just like that. And now you can see we've got a little bit of extra wire here. I don't like to cut the wire out. So what we'll do is just kind of gather it up. So we're about right here. So if we need to make any changes or any repairs, we'll have plenty of extra wire to do so with. We can tuck that down there so it'll stay nice and neat and out of the way. Got our fuse holder right there, easily accessible. Then to keep it from moving around, we'll just slide a zip tie right through that small hole. We'll bring it right around our positive cable there. We'll hold it in place for us so we can always get to it. Trim off our excess. We're ready to hook up our negative side cable. Put that down on there and use our 10 mil to tighten it back down. All right, with everything secure up here, let's take a second to go back under the car, investigate our 12 volt wire, check it out, make sure we don't have any looseness or any, any sagging that we need to get buttoned up and taken care of. As you can see, we've got good tension on our power wire. It comes back, it's not sagging anywhere. Uh, right here, for instance, kind of sagging down a little bit, right? So let's just zip tie it up. It gets that up and out of the way, gives us a little more clearance. So anywhere we can do that and just kind of tidy that up, it's going to help your process. Now see here, this is not really at a danger point. It is clearing the shock, but we've got an opportunity just to bring it right over and give it a little bit of extra room. So. Why not? We got a zip tie here left over. Now let's go through and check our functions of our plug to make sure we've got everything connected properly. You see we've got the bare tab that sticks out. That we're going to use as our ground, so we'll connect our test light to that. We'll have our brown wire here. This should get constant signal from our running lights when we make contact. Perfect. Now we'll check our yellow wire for our left blinker. As you can see, we're getting the intermittent signal that'll flash with our light. And now we'll check the green wire for our left blinker, or for our right blinker. Perfect. Now we'll have our buddy stand on the brakes. And now we should have constant signal on both the green and the yellow. All right, everything checks out. It's ready for use. With everything secure and working properly, that'll complete today's installation of the Tow Ready T1 Vehicle Wiring Harness, part number 118534 on our 2015 Dodge Grand Caravan.